Welcome everyone to Agritech's travel-free digital webinar series. Today's guest, I'm excited to welcome Joyce Hunter, CEO of Vulcan Enterprises. And our topic today is artificial intelligence in agriculture. Joyce, thank you so much for being here and taking the time. Excited to see your presentation and to learn more about AI and ag. Well, you're more than welcome. I'm happy to be here as well. In these particular times that we are living in, uh, these, this social distancing method of getting information across is great. Uh, thank goodness for technology. And technology is wonderful as, as it, when it works. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to share some information about AI and agriculture. Uh, as the former deputy CIO at the Department of AI Agriculture, uh, I have followed artificial intelligence as well as blockchain and other types of technologies that can be used to help not only farmers, but growers, producers, and consumers. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, the population will increase by 2 billion by 2050. However, only 4% additional land will come under cultivation by then. In this context, use of latest technological solutions to make farming more efficient remains one of the greatest imperatives. While artificial intelligence, or AI, sees a lot of direct application across sectors, it can also bring a paradigm shift in how we see farming today. AI-powered solutions will not only enable farmers to do more with less, it will also improve quality and ensure faster go-to-market for crops. In this area, we will discuss how AI can change the agriculture landscape, the application of drone-based image processing techniques, farming pre precision farming landscape, the future of agriculture, and the challenges ahead. According to UN Food and Agriculture Organization, this is what the population will look like. And we believe that this is what is going to spur the interest and the use of artificial intelligence in agriculture. As the UN summit says, to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, we are going to use these technological improvements in order to make life better for consumers, producers, and farmers. Agriculture is seeing rapid adoption of artificial intelligence and machine learning, which we will refer to as ML, both in terms of agricultural products and in-field farming techniques. Cognitive computing in particular is all set to become the most disruptive technology in agriculture services as it can understand, learn, and respond to different situations based on learning to increase efficiency. Huge volumes of data get generated every day in both structured and unstructured format. These relate to data on historical weather patterns, soil reports, new research, rainfall, pest infestation, images from drones and cameras, and so on. Cognitive IoT solutions can sense all this data and provide strong insights to improve yield. Proximity sensing and remote sensing are two technologies which are primarily used for intelligent data fusion. One use of this case is high resolution data is soil taste testing. While remote sensing requires sensors to be built into airborne or satellite systems, proximity sensing requires sensors in contact with the soil or at very least close range. This helps in soil characterization based on the soil below, the surface in a particular place. Hardware solutions like robot pertaining to coins are already pairing data collection software with robotics to prepare the best fertilizer for growing in addition to other activities to maximize output. So let's talk about the scope of AI in agriculture. Precision farming is one of the most discussion areas in the farming today. Drone-based images can help the in-depth field analysis, crop monitoring, scanning of fields, and so on. Computer vision technology, IoT, and drone data can be combined to ensure rapid actions by farmers. Feed from drone image data can generate alerts in real time to accelerate precision farming. Another area is disease detection. Pre-processing of images ensure the leaf images are segmented into areas like background, non-disease part, and disease part. The disease part is then cropped and sent to remote labs for further diagnosis. It also helps in pest identification, nutrient deficiency, 
recognition, and more. A third area is crop readiness identification. Images of different crops under white UVA lights are captured to determine how ripe the green fruits are. Farmers can create different levels of readiness based on the crop fruit category and add them into separate stacks before sending them to the market. Another area is field management. Using high definition images from airborne systems, drone or copters, real-time estimates can be made during cultivation period by creating a feed map, field map, and identifying areas where crops require water, fertilizer, or pesticides. This helps in resource optimization for a huge extent. Based on multiple parameters like soil condition, weather forecasting, types of seeds, infestation in a certain area, and so on, cognitive solutions make recommendations to farmers on the best choice of crops and hybrid seeds. The recommendation can be further personalized based on the farm's requirement, local conditions, and data about successful farming in the past. External factors like marketplace trends, prices, or consumer needs may also be factored into and enable farmers to take a well-informed decision. Remote sensing techniques, along with hyperspectral imaging and 3D laser scanning, are essential to build crop metrics across thousands of acres. It has the potential to bring in revolutionary change in terms of how farmlands are monitored by farmers, both from time and effort perspective. This technology will also be used to monitor crops along their entire life cycle, including report generation in case of anomalies. In terms of human intensive processing in farming, Irrigation is one such processing. Machines trained on historical weather patterns, soil quality, and kind of crops to be grown can automate irrigation and increase overall yield. With close to 70% of the world's fresh water being used in irrigation, automation can help farmers better manage their water problems. The phrase right place, right time, right product sums up precision farming. This is a more accurate and controlled technique that replaces the repetitive and labor-intensive part of farming. It also provides guidance about crop rotation. Profitability identifying crops and markets strategically as well as predicting ROI based on cost and margin. Efficiency by investing in precision algorithms, better, faster, and cheaper farming opportunities can be utilized. This enables overall accuracy and efficient use of resources. Sustainability can provide improved social, environmental, and economic performance. It ensures incremental improvements each season for all the performance indicators. So in summary, though artificial intelligence offers vast opportunities for application in agriculture, there still exists a lack of familiarity with high-tech machine learning solutions in farms across most parts of the world. The future of farming depends largely on adoption of cognitive solutions. While large-scale research is still in progress and some applications are already available in the market, the industry is still highly underserved when it comes to handling realistic challenges faced by farmers and using autonomous decision-making and predictive solutions to solve them. Farming is still at a nascent stage. Thank you. Excellent, Joyce. Thank you so much for that presentation. You know, artificial intelligence has really been one of the, the top trending items for, you know, agriculture and the future of agriculture. You know, what do you think is the biggest challenge for farmers in adopting this type of technology for their operation? I think one of the biggest challenges, of course, is bandwidth. Um, we're still talking about getting enough bandwidth out to a lot of the rural areas. And so I think a lot of it has to do with not only bandwidth, but also just familiarity and comfort level. Uh, I think there needs to be some hands-on explanation or some technical assistance for a lot of the farmers to understand exactly what the technology brings them. Mm -hmm. And also to get talk to the farmers to find out what is it that they're looking for. Uh, customer experience and, and customer engagement is extremely important. We can't just develop these nice highfalutin technology decisions and put it out there and expect everybody to adopt it immediately. 
I think there needs to be, it's a, the, the farming community is a high touch mm -hmm. area, high touch, uh, they, they like personal interaction. And so I think if we can have those kinds of outreach, either from the Department of Agriculture or from Agritecture, uh, that can actually, um, you know, bring these technologies into a town hall or a town meeting and answer the questions that farmers have. Got it, got it. So for, you know, for the, the entrepreneur or the ag tech company that's developing, you know, some type of AI, you know, software or machinery or product for farmers, you know, what do you think is the, the best approach for them to really, you know, bring that product to market? And I know you, you touched on it just now, but, you know, what other strategies should, you know, entrepreneurs and CEOs be thinking about when they're looking to, you know, offer a new solution to the market? I think they ought to do case studies. They could take an example of where they have been successful in the past and put that out as a case study on paper, as well as do a roadshow and uh, bring that customer with them, that farmer with them, uh, whether it's a, you know, online presentation or a webinar or uh, some other way of being able to get that kind of, of information into the hands of the people who are going to be making those decisions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, based on, on your experience and the work you do, are there any exciting technologies that you think have real potential or that you're just really excited about that you want to share with the audience? Oh, yeah. I, I think the, the whole um, soil testing is so critical, especially as we get into more into uh, the explanation and the uh, mitigation of climate change. And so being able to provide that, just that right type of solution for those soil problems, uh, as well as uh, these new kinds of technologies and machines. Uh, I, about a couple of years ago, I was able to take a tour of the UC Davis uh, Biomedical Agricultural Engineering facility out at, at uh, the agriculture natural resources at UC Davis and they were building this tractor I don't know if you recall the Star Wars movie um, where they're the, um, the, the 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 storm walkers they were on these big stilts and mm -hmm. they were kind of walking through well it was the exact same thing the only difference is that the, the legs were very very thin thin and on the bottom of the legs they had cameras so they could actually walk through cornfields and and other types of fields and take pictures of the roots of the and and see if there are any pests or diseases on the roots and the most amazing thing about that uh, is that it was operated on an xbox operating system so wow. i think that yeah it's so cool um and it was and the first thing i saw it was bright red so you can't miss it out in the field uh, but to see one of these things being developed uh, in an engineering lab at mm -hmm. uc davis gives me hope for that there's other kinds of things like this that can be developed and deployed it's so cool it's like a mix of like sci-fi turning into yeah. like modern high-tech agriculture um and that exactly. must be, you know, really interesting and inspiring to see, especially for young people that are looking to get more involved into, yes. you know, the agricultural workforce. Um, you know, with yes. these advancements in artificial intelligence within, you know, agriculture and ag tech, what advice would you give to the aspiring young person that is looking to, you know, join the workforce and, you know, start a career within agriculture? Well, there are, there's a whole life cycle of, of mm -hmm. things in agriculture. There are people who are, are very into um, growing. Uh, so there are lots of growing. And uh, in fact, there, um, there's an organization for veterans for who are leaving uh, the service and um, would like to get into farming. John Jackson, I don't, I'm pretty sure you know of him. Uh, he has created a farm for uh, veterans called Comfort Farms. And so he takes these veterans and, and turns them into farmers. And they are very, very, they're very successful. Uh, some of them end up going in uh, being a chef. And some actually, you know, stick to the actual growing and producing of uh, goods, whether they are uh, vegetables or animals or, or whatever. 
Uh, then there are the people who work for the John Deere's and the Caterpillars of the world. Um, I had a student that went to my summer camp that when he graduated from college, he ended up getting a job as a, a, a computer scientist uh, developing the programs for the autonomous vehicles that John Deere uh, has. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the people in the back who are actually doing the analyzing of all of the data that uh, AI and machine learning is collecting and providing it to companies um, like uh, uh, Dow and, and other companies like that um, and being able to uh, come up with solutions to help farmers to make better decisions on their growing, on their planting, and on how to till their soil and, and even animal husbandry. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, we would definitely want to include those links to you know the resources and, and farms you've mentioned below, so we'll make sure to add those to our description. I think Absolutely. in closing, um, Joyce, is there anything you want to um, impart on our viewers, on our audience? Um, before we end. Absolutely. I think agriculture is the new oil. Uh, that is where, you know, we, everybody has to eat. Uh, and so I think if we can, especially with the projected growth of people, uh, we're, we're going to have to do something in order to increase production. And that is going to include everybody from your garden farmers all the way up to the big producers. Everybody plays a part because we're all in this together. You're right. We are all in this together. Um, Joyce, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, very much enjoyed this conversation. And to follow your work, we have your address right there, www.vulcanenterprises-llc.com. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Joyce. Thank you, and have a great day. Stay, stay safe. Thank you. Wash your hands. Yes. yes absolutely. Mm -hmm.